Um, I want to start with you, Patricia Murphy, and just tell me, tell me how this is playing in Georgia. So this is not playing well in Georgia, as you might imagine. Um, Herschel Walker uh, has not lived in Georgia, um, you know, for about the last 40 years when he decided to get into the Senate race. Georgia Republicans were concerned because they knew they didn't know everything about him. They knew him as a famous football player. They knew he was a friend of Donald Trump's, but they didn't know anything else. They didn't know if he would be able to run a campaign. They didn't know if he would be able to debate. And they certainly did not know what his background would be, but they were worried. So now that these uh, revelations are coming out, I would say it's two different buckets. There's the Daily Beast story, which I think some of his uh, supporters are going to be able to dismiss pretty easily without a named source. But then the uh, revelations and the really just this outpouring of emotion from his son, Christian Walker, has really been like a bomb going off in this race. I've talked to Republicans who said that they are angry, they're frustrated, they didn't want to be in this position with Herschel Walker, but this is where they are. He's their nominee, and they're trying to figure out how to move forward right now. You know, I mean, I know some Georgia Republicans um, blame Donald Trump for costing um, basically Republicans control the Senate, for harming the Republicans running there. Herschel Walker is not aligned, really, with the Republicans running statewide. I mean, he wasn't—Trump uh, didn't have his way in the governor's race, in the secretary of state race. Are there any divisions between Walker— and Kemp at this point. So Herschel Walker and Brian Kemp are not longtime allies. Herschel Walker is not of the Georgia GOP in a way that Brian Kemp is and the way that other GOP leaders are here in the state. Um, again, they knew that he was a Donald Trump friend, a longtime friend, but they didn't have those longtime ties. So what we're hearing right now from Governor Kemp's campaign is that he's working for the entire ticket. He has not come out since all of this has um, has exploded here in Georgia. He has not come out to say, I support Herschel Walker. That's what we were listening for, and that has not come, and that's really relevant. It's very important. We are seeing national Republicans like Senator Rick Scott from the NRSC say, oh, we support Herschel Walker 100 percent, but he's not hearing the same things that the governor's office is hearing. He's not hearing those voters here in Georgia, and so I think that um, the silence of Governor Kemp on Herschel Walker so far is very, very relevant right now. Um, Tara Setmeyer, let me show you what another Trump-endorsed Republican Senate candidate says he feels about women and violence. Because to, to Patricia's point, the other, you know, the bomb that has detonated in the state, in her words, is the accusations from the Sun. And they're about moving six times. The rest of that um, clip goes on to talk about having to move six times, about avoiding threats of violence from Herschel Walker. Let me play J.D. Vance on the topic of women in violent marriages. This is one of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace, which is this idea that, like, well, okay, these marriages were fundamentally, you know, they were they were maybe even violent, but certainly they were unhappy, and so getting rid of them and making it easier for people to shift spouses, like they change their underwear, that's going to make people happier in the long term, and maybe it worked out for the moms and dads, though I'm skeptical, but it really didn't work out for the kids of those marriages, and I think that's what all of us should be honest about is we've run this experiment in real time and what we have is a lot of very, very real family dysfunction that's making our kids unhappy. So Tara, the reason Rick Scott hasn't come out and condemned Herschel Walker is because the misogyny is the point. It's not a bug, it's a feature of today's Republican Party. Do you think that argument is make, being made aggressively enough in the political arena? Uh, no, and but I do see that women, though, are paying attention. And they see what's going on, whether it's the Dobbs case or what these candidates are saying. Women are registering at record rates, and they're motivated to go out and vote because they're looking at an entire party that used to herald itself as the party of family values. I remember the moral majority and their sanctimony, and they would come out and talk about the importance of, of family and, and all of and, and integrity and character. This is the same party that tried to that impeached Bill Clinton for what he did in the 90s. Boy, we are a far cry away from that. So now the Republican Party has become a party of misogyny, a party of racism, bigotry, of hypocrisy, of, of, of rewarding liars, and people who are completely unqualified to represent 
anyone. They're not qualified to be dog catcher. I wouldn't trust these people with the, the, the local pound. And yet you have all of these leaders in the Republican Party making excuses, bending over backwards to try to act like their candidates aren't completely out of the mainstream. But they continue to appease. They continue to allow these um, unqualified candidates, these extremists, these misogynists, these liars, these anti-democratic, pro-insurrection election deniers. They allow them to be mainstream Republicans, and these are our candidates, and they don't back away from it. Why? All to own the libs and for power. And I think that is incredibly dangerous for our democracy, and our voters need to really pay attention. Are these the type of people you want representing you? Are these the type of people you would herald and use as examples to your own children? Character should matter. Telling the truth should matter. We should stop normalizing this, but Republicans are continuing to do that, and they're way too close in these races. These races are entirely too close. Herschel Walker shouldn't be anywhere near close in this race, and yet it's virtually tied. Will this change it? I don't know. I'm not so sure. I mean, you know, Alexi, there is an important inflection point here in understanding the Republican Party. There is, it's, oxy, it's an oxymoron to describe a GOP scandal. I think Roy Moore may have been the last Republican scandal-plagued candidate, and, and maybe alleged pedophilia is the last thing. And we'll see in the future if that ever, if those allegations are ever made, if that disqualifies anyone. But we may, I mean, Herschel Walker was on Sean Hannity last night probably raised a boatload of money from that appearance. We are in a post-scandal, a post-moral gravity moment for one of the two political parties. Well, and I was having a conversation with someone about this earlier, that like the survivability of scandals post Donald Trump has just completely changed in the political arena. And you know that as well as I do. People have been likening this to the Access Hollywood moment with Donald Trump. But of course, we all know how that ended in 2016. And, you know, I think for many people, they look across the country and see these Republican nominees, as you pointed out, with people like J.D. Vance in Ohio, Herschel Walker. We look to Arizona with Blake Masters, New Hampshire as well. These these candidates who are just, you know, so far out of the norm and what the president would consider ultra MAGA, that they're really faced with a choice of what to do. But I think what Democrats are going to try to do moving forward, and this is based on conversations I've had today, is not focus so closely on this one specific story about abortion, the alleged abortion with Herschel Walker, but instead paint a larger picture, as they've been trying to do, uh, of a dishonest man, of a man who you don't really know because they say he's lying about a number of things. Those domestic violence allegations that you mentioned earlier, Democrats in Georgia have been running ads against him, focusing on those things, really kind of building that narrative to target suburban women, rural black women, who Democrats say Herschel Walker hasn't been doing well with and is a critical block for Democrats or Republicans to win the state this time around. 